Hey, so on this episode, I wanna to talk to you about one of the, the greatest, greatest paradigm shifts for me as it pertains to wealth, riches, and what it means like building God's kingdom. Um, man, it's so easy for us as we look at this idea of what it means to be truly rich and what wealth actually is. Well, this culture does a wonderful job of articulating what it believes is rich. Gather all the possessions that you possibly can and gather all as you can and then get to a certain point where you just kind of let off the gas called retirement and coast your way to death. There's a story that is in scripture that derailed that thinking for me and made me realize that in a lot of ways, I was actually more rich than most, didn't know it, but there's a lot of rich people that are actually broke. And so this passage in scripture does a wonderful job of articulating what this actually looks like. And then I'm gonna unpack probably three hidden points that you didn't even think about as, as, as we've just kind of skimmed over these in all the years of being Christ followers. So check this out. So the rich young ruler, this is in Mark chapter 10. And as we look at this panning out with Jesus, take a look at how and the condition of this guy, think of the setting, who he is, what matters most to him and why he's running up and asking Jesus, why is he even taking the time to do this? But boy, you're gonna see yourself in this story. It says in, in Mark chapter 10, 17, as he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, hey, why do you call me good? No one's good except God alone. You know the commandments. And he's like saying, hey, you already know to this dude. He's like, dude, you already know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, and do not steal, and do not give false testimony. Do not defraud, honor your father and your mother. And this dude's like, hey, teacher, I have kept all these things from my youth. He's literally kept the law to the law, like to the nth degree. And so he's coming up saying, like, I'm doing this, man. I've got it all. I've been keeping it. Looking at him, Jesus showed love to him and said this. You know what? There's one thing that you lack. If you say to a rich dude, there's one thing that you lack, you think you're going to get his attention? Because he believes that he's got everything. He's rich. He lacks nothing. And he goes, the one thing that you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But he was deeply dismayed by these words and he went away grieving for he was one who owned much property. And Jesus looking around said to his disciples, guys, how hard it will be for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. And the, dis and the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus responded again and said to them, children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were even more astonished and said to him, then who can be saved? Looking at them, Jesus said, with people it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. Now here's what I think is act actually absolutely incredible. When you take a rich person that has all the possessions and all the wealth and they built their life on what they possess and what they have like this guy was, they don't need much from anybody because essentially point number one, they are their own God. They're secure. They wanna get things as predictable and the outcomes as sustainable and fill their barns with seed. And as we've talked about before in the past, that seed that has been stored will rot. It takes faith to take that seed and put it in the ground. Most of the time we've talked about seed being money, but in God's word, he talks about the seed among the path is God's word. Have you listened to God's word? Have you taken it? Has it found fertile soil in your heart? Have you lived a life in response to it by living a life of faith? What does that mean? When it comes to our finances, we got to turn Confederate dollars into kingdom stock. This was this guy's dilemma. He was rich and abundantly wealthy with stuff, but none of it had eternal results. Jesus said, there's the one thing that you lack. Take it all that you possess and give it to the poor. You wanna know what I really believe is happening here? Is this couple points. Number one, he thought he was a baller nailing it 
by keeping the law. Number two, he thought he was rich, but he realized he was broke. This guy didn't think he lacked anything, but he was tremendously running on a deficit. Actually, he was a negative because here's the thing, your assets, your assets on earth, you ready for this one? Game changer. Your assets, his possessions on earth, become liabilities in heaven. How much of what he owned on earth actually will be converted into those things which will last eternally? We gotta ask our, all of us ourselves that question. Number two, here's his biggest one. Not only was he broke as a joke, he had all these possessions, but when, he, when the Lord says, listen, the kingdom of God, this is why it's so hard because when you're your own God and you have all these possessions and you're, you're ruling your own life, you don't need anything. There's no need for faith. But when we deploy those things, sell our goods, transfer our time, our talents, our treasures into those things which have eternal outcomes, it requires God to make it rain again for us to get more seed, to have more crops, to have more growth, to have more yield. That's a life and partnership with God to have that continual reciprocation with him. That means I have to deploy and let go of and invest, not give away. I have to invest into those things which are eternal. So that's number two. Okay, but here's the big one. He didn't know any poor people. You wanna talk about discouraged? He spent the majority of his life, dude, the majority of his life acquiring wealth but the wrong kind of currency. Wealth is people and relationships and souls to God, not stuff. Stuff will go up in flames, souls won't. The question is, are you converting that stuff to kingdom stock, which will last forever? So he thought he was rich, he wasn't. He thought he had everything, he lacked. And the whole thing that he lacked was the perspective of the kingdom of God and how heaven's currency actually works. So I'd be bummed kind of too. Man, here I am, rich, and, but then I find out I'm broke. Then I find out I don't know any poor people. I didn't even set up an infrastructure or a system of where I'm gonna deploy these assets and conversions. I don't even know any poor people. Yes, I'd be discouraged too. And lastly, he probably didn't have much time. Boy, Jesus has actually talked in some of these moments where he was talking about, hey, you fool, tonight your bed will be snatched from you. We assume we have a ton of time. We assume we have a ton of time. So my friend, my encouragement and my question to you with your creativity, with your entrepreneurship, with your life of you stewarding your time, your talent, and your money, and your creativity, and the relationships that you have, how much have you converted the Confederate dollars that you are creating on earth and the things that you possess, are you converting them into kingdom stock? Those things which will last. That's why the Lord, I believe wholeheartedly says it's more difficult for someone, a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because to break the cycle of manna off, to break the umbilical cord and to break that mentality and perspective and paradigm off of a person, is such a radical detachment that you're literally taking their identity and their worth away from them. Why? Because most of us, like myself for so long, judge my self-worth on my net worth. Is it possible for us to make that switch today? I'm in your corner. Leave a comment down below. I hope you have an amazing day. Thanks for watching.